Because apparently I like to punish myself for something. Well today I'm going to be creating art using supplies I hate. Or rather should I say attempting to create art using supplies I hate? Let's go. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here. This kind of video was popular years ago and it was mostly with makeup creators. I shout out to Super 8 Dizzle, I saw her doing a video like this years ago. But I know you guys love to see me struggle, so I'm about to try to create some magic using supplies I really hate. I guess I should start by saying I am gonna be using colour and pencils in this video. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that they are my absolute faves. However, this brand, the Arteza colour and pencils, they are my absolute worst pencils to use. I'm so sorry to everybody. And if these are your faves, I'm happy for you. <laughs> but for me? So this is what the box looks like. It's got 120 pencils and it's pretty affordable. My issues with it lies with actually how the pencils work. They've got so many different colors, but the pigment is not pigmented. And honestly, I really don't like these pencils. But yeah, these are the pencils I'm gonna fight with today. What sketchbook you might be asking? I don't know why so many people love this sketchbook. I really don't understand the hype. It's hairy. It's, I don't, honestly, the paper is so smooth that you might think, oh, that's a good thing. It is not, it is absolutely not. It's so hard to layer and to do anything on these sketchbooks. So they're my least favorites as well. I'm not saying these are bad supplies. I'm not saying these are bad companies. I've got other products from both companies that I really like. It's just these specific products did not work for me at all. And obviously, if any of these are your faves, then I'm happy for you, keep going. You don't have to throw them away because I hate them. But I can tell you, it's definitely a struggle. So yeah, let's see if I could get these to work for me today. I think the best way to allow you guys to understand how much I don't like these supplies is just to show you in action. Firstly, the tone tan. The paper is nice and thick, which is fantastic. It is 300 GSM. And I bought the mixed media on purpose. It says it's good for wet and dry media. But my main issue is with how smooth it is. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that I love a little bit of texture, at least a tiny bit. So compared to my faves, and this is what I was saying, this is the Arteza Mixed Media Pad. And again, ideal for wet and dry media, but considerably less thick. And this, it'll be very hard to show this properly on camera, but it just has a little bit of texture. Completely smooth and hairy, and this, this texture there, sure. And honestly, I feel like that makes all the difference. So for the colouring pencils, firstly the quality, the container, the lid. <laughs> anyway. Now with the pencils, again this might be difficult to share, but I just do not like the way they apply. Pigment is alright and they blend okay, but I don't like the way they feel. It kind of feels like the lead is hard, so it's giving Faber-Castell polychromo. So if I compare it directly to Prismacolors, so I've got the Prismacolor Premier set. The Prismacolor is just so much nicer to use. It just feels a lot nicer. The Prismacolors actually feel amazing. I've also got the Faber-Castell polychromos, which are famous for a hard lead. So I'm also gonna compare those. And again, these feel so much nicer. So yeah, comparing these three brands, normally I actually don't really like Faber-Castell, but now I'm thinking Faber-Castell's actually work really well on this paper. It just blended amazingly. The Prismacolors, as usual, that's a common fave. But the Arteza's, not my faves. I absolutely do not like them. And I hope this comparison kind of gives you a better idea, but let's move on to the drawing. Here is the reference I've chosen to use for today. I'm gonna do it cropped, just the eyes, because I don't want to spend too long on this drawing. So I'm just gonna transfer my sketch quickly. If you're familiar with my channel, you know this is what I love to do. I love using a graphite transfer sheet along with my sketch on a separate sheet of paper. By the way, if you struggle with sketches, I've got a proportions video that I'll link up in the cards. You can check that out after this one. But here I'm just using a biro to go over all of the lines and you see that it forms a really nice transfer. The transfer also came out pretty dark and I ended up erasing it a little bit, but now I'm ready to do the colouring. First thing I'm going to do is to grab all the colours that I think I will need. And for this step, I'm just looking at the reference picture and just trying to identify what colours I think I can see. 
with color pencil drawings i know a lot of people struggle with picking the perfect colors and actually i'm working on a skillshare class that should address this so stay tuned if, if you're watching this from the future the link might be down below but this is a great time to announce that i now have a patreon so if you want to follow this tutorial closely to get into the mind of the artist why i picked the colors that i picked and step-by-step -step process then head over to my patreon i'll leave it linked at the top of the description box but the most important thing is for your pencil to be sharp. I use an automatic sharpener and look how nice and sharp the points are. It really helps you with your blending, really helps you with your layering. So if you take nothing else from this video, keep your pencil sharp. And going straight in with the colouring, you see that I put washi tape in the middle and that is because I've decided to do the other side using Faber-Castell polychromos. So those aren't my ideal pencils either, so it won't be like a good versus bad. I'm just genuinely curious as to what they'll be like for a portrait on this paper. As you can see during the test, I was actually quite shocked about how well they applied. And this is because Faber-Castell have a really hard lead. I usually avoid them. I think most of the artists that prefer them are pet portrait artists. And it makes sense because of the fur. But with regular portraits, if you're trying to blend smooth skin and doing all of that, Faber-Castells are not my first choice. So yeah, I'll be doing the right side using Faber Castells. But with this Arteza side, except for some of the issues that I've spoken about earlier about how the pencils actually apply, I really don't like the colour range. I don't know what it is about it, because you would think 120 colours, what more can you need? But when you actually go into the colours, it feels like there are no useful colours there. And I mean useful colours for portraits. So I guess that makes this set quite versatile. They've got loads of blues and loads of greens, so if you're interested in landscapes or drawing bodies of water, I'm sure you'll love this set, but for portraits, they seem to be lacking for me. I found myself constantly searching for a colour and then just coming up short and then having to layer and mix my own colours. But I've started with the eyeball and some of the limitations are the white isn't a very bright white and the black isn't the darkest black, so it's really not great. By the way, with my Patreon, I have a longer tutorial if you're more interested in learning, but I also have other tiers. So I have a tier where you can participate in polls, early access to videos, monthly live streams, behind the scenes, work in progress shots. So feel free to head over there. I'd love to have you as a part of this community. But now I'm going to move on to the Faber-Castell side. I'm also trying to identify the colours that I think I'll need. And I know I mentioned about Arteza's colour range, but Faber-Castell's colour range, I'm also not here for it. <laughs> to be honest, this is a video of my two least favourite colour pencils ever. If you want to know my actual favourite supplies to use, I'll leave a link to the video down in the description box. I'm also having the same issue with the white of the Faber-Castell. It just doesn't get a really super bright white, but I guess it's fine. Also, I couldn't find my black Faber-Castell pencil, so I just used a Prismacolor one. I found that I prefer to do this eye better than the Arteza one. The iris just appears a lot brighter, the colours are a lot more vibrant. So for this part of the drawing, the Faber-Castell side was winning. Even if it's not a composition, because I dislike these both. <laughs> and now moving on to the skin. This is where I had to fight the paper and the pencil. And to be honest, I saw it coming. But I think this is the part that will hopefully make it clear why I don't like these supplies. Normally when I do skin, I like to do an underpainting using markers or pan pastels. But for this video, I just wanted to show you the colour pencils by themselves. And back in the day, I did use to use Faber-Castells by themselves, but it was on a much more textured paper. So again, completely different vibe. But for this one, starting with the eyelid, the skin around that was pretty easy to blend and to layer the colours. So that turned out pretty nice. But for the rest of the skin, the basic technique was just layering. So I started with the lighter colours and I gradually went darker.
in the reference picture the skin is so glowy there's a true yellow undertone and so i found myself using light browns more goldy yellows and even blending to a light yellow to try to imitate what i saw in the skin After a lot of layering, I'm finally feeling like I'm getting somewhere with the skin, but my issue is with the blend. And honestly, I'm not surprised about the scratchy blend because of the pencils and the paper. <laughs> I'm spending some time on the eyebrows. So this is where there's another limitation. This paper makes it really hard to layer. And so it's kind of hard to go over where I already have pigment down. And with everything I'm speaking about in this video, these are all things that just made the process harder. So it's still possible to create a nice drawing, definitely, but other supplies would have made this process easier. And I really do think it comes down to personal preference. For me, using a harder lead makes my hands hurt more because I feel like I'm going in with more pressure than I really want to be. And look at this rookie error taking the washi tape out and taking the paper with it but moving on to the faber castell side i mentioned that i preferred drawing the eye on this side but i actually hated drawing the skin on this side again it's a similar issue with the colors or rather the lack of colors but this side was just so difficult to even create something that looks remotely like skin So I know I spoke bad about these supplies the entire video, but really they're not bad supplies to use. I hope I've been able to show you how much harder it just makes it. So you really will have to be persistent and fight through the ugly phase because neither the pencils or the paper are going to do the work for you. Let me know if you want to see another version of this video where I actually repeat this, but using supplies I really love. So thanks so much for watching, don't forget to sign your work and I'm sure you love this video next where I show you the secrets behind my portrait drawings.